be loud for the match between the New York Giants and the Washington Redskins on an absolutely gorgeous day in our nation's capital. Good afternoon. I'm Pat Summerall. Let's get the injury situation out of the way first. Giants, Jumbo Elliott, their starting left tackle, is out. And Rodney Hampton, their number one draft choice and fine pass receiver, is also out. On the Redskins side, Gerald Riggs, one of their key running backs, has a bad back. He's going to try to play, but we don't know if he can or not. With me, as usual, John Madden. The Giants have beaten the Redskins four in a row. They are 4-0 on this year. How do the Redskins approach this, and what do the Giants think they have done? Well, you know, I think the Giants feel that they have them in great position because they have the advantage. They've beaten them the last four times. They have a psychological advantage. They want to keep that advantage. They know that they're going to play the Redskins two out of the next three weeks. So they have to come in here and win in their park, and they could start to finish the Redskins for the season today. Now, what they have to do is the same thing on offense, that ball possession and strong defense. Joe Gibbs, the Redskin coach, told us yesterday that he has tried to emphasize to his team throughout this week that this is just another game, not a big game, and we're not out of it if we lose. I don't think he can do that. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I don't believe that. He knows it's a big game. His team knows it's a big game, and he probably isn't out of it, you know, for a wild card type of thing. He could be out of it for a division thing, but he has to go in here and play Redskin football. No turnovers. His biggest problem is he has great receivers, but he has a guy, Stan Humphrey, starting as an NFL quarterback only his second time. So both coaches, Parcells on the left, and Joe Gibbs have said, ah, oh, this is not that big a game, but they both love it. Parcells, I know, loves to come here and play, and Gibbs very proud of the crowd and this year's Washington Redskins. Joe Howard brings it out of the end zone about a yard deep. Cut down on a flag on the play. 22-yard return, stopped by Durson. The referee is Tom Dooley. And let's look at what the Redskins will operate with. Stan Humphreys, as John Madden says, just starting his second game at quarterback. Up front, Lachey, Grimm, Bostic, McKenzie. Simmons, the right tackle. Donnie Warren, the tight end. Biner will start at running back. And the three... Great wide receivers, Monk, Sanders, and Clark. The posse will open. Humphreys had a hot day against Phoenix last week in his first NFL start. First and ten Redskins at the nine-yard line. Johnny Cooks starting in place of Carl Banks. That's Finer. Hit by her Howard first. Greg Jackson, the second man to hit him. The defense, they show you a basic three-man front. Dorsey, Howard, and Washington. The keys to the defense. Banks is not in there. It's Johnny Cooks, Diasi, and Pepper Johnson in the middle, and Lawrence Taylor on the other side. Secondary, Renee Thompson and Everson Walls, the corners. Guyton and Jackson, the safety. Second down and seven. Clark lined up tight to the left side. Humphreys with a lot of time throws it away. Well, we were talking to Humphreys yesterday, and he said that's the thing he has to do is be patient. Don't force anything. If it's not there, just throw it away. You know, Carl Banks uh, dislocated his wrist in their last game. Remember, before they had to buy against the Dallas Cowboys, they put a pin in his wrist. Since then, they've taken it out. Now, the word is that it swelled up somehow last night, that his wrist swelled up inside of the cast. And that was why he didn't start. They had Lawrence Taylor lined up in the middle of the defensive setup now. Kelvin Bryant was in. Humphreys just barely gets away and scrambles out. Dives for a red skin first down, lost the football. Reasons put on the pressure, a 10-yard scramble by Humphreys, and they say he did not fumble. And that's why these, these fans love Stan Humphreys. He doesn't have the arm maybe that Mark Rippon has, but he is. He does have good movement. How he got past Leonard Marshall there, that shows strength, because Marshall was coming with a pretty big load. He just kind of ran right through his arm. You know, the Redskins have yet to have a turnover offensively this year. And that pleases Joe Gibbs to 
a great degree. Monk with wide right. This is Biner to the left. Hit by Cooks. He spun away from him. Picked up a couple. You know, Pepper Johnson was saying yesterday, Pat, that this game is kind of a bully thing early. That what you do is it's kind of their defense, a giant defense, are kind of the tough guys, and the offensive line of the Redskins are the tough guys. So you start off, you know, like two bullies in a neighborhood to see who's going to get the corner. Second and seven. Opening moments of quarter number one. Redskins and the Giants. Johnson is put out wide to the left. A tight end. Humphreys draw play to Viner. Spun around and brought down by Pepper Johnson. You know, Pepper Johnson has really come along this year. And, you know, Bill Parcells was saying that, you know, one of the guys, that, you know, two or three guys that have just kind of seen the light. Like, boom, the light just comes on and Pepper finally got it. And I think, I think part of it is he has more freedom. And I think that's why he's leading the team in tackles in a lot of ways this year. The coach said yesterday, right now, he's my best player. Number 52. I'd still take 56. Yeah, I think I would, too. Monk is the move man. Pass complete. A little bit shy of a first down. It was to Monk. His first catch of the day, and that makes... Well, they're going to measure, I think. Otis Anderson trying to stay cool. There's going to be a big decision here. I think, you know, Joe Gibbs has already substituted offensively, thinking he had the first down. Well, they're going to measure. You know, Art Monk, being the veteran that he is, I would say he had a first down. About half the length of the ball. Now he has caught passes in 105 consecutive games. Look at the guys he's caught him from during that. Joe Theismann, Jay Schrader, Doug Williams, Mark Rippon, and, of course, Stan Humphreys. In those 105 consecutive games, Art Monk has had five different quarterbacks. And he's been the steadying factor the whole time. 11 years, and the guy uh, just doesn't seem to get old. You know, he seems to still have that bounce in his walk. You know, he still doesn't seem to get the notoriety that some of the other receivers around the league do either. Yeah, that's amazing. A guy, you know, very well could be a Hall of Fame player. And, uh, you know, and they don't talk about him like a Hall of Fame player, player while he's playing. I'm not quite sure what Joe Gibbs is upset about. It's a Redskin timeout charge to them, so they'll have two down. I think what he wanted was was uh, the measurement. He wanted the timeout during the measurement, and they started the clock. They started counting the clock while they were measuring as he was asking for the measurement. See, and that's what well, happened. He got reason to be upset. Yeah, and then and then by the time they measured and said he had a first down, he didn't have time to call his play, so he had to take a timeout. The guys leaping all over was Freddie Wyant, who was a referee. And did play quarterback for the Redskins at one time. Two tight ends move to the right. Clark backs up. Humphreys wants another timeout. Looked like the referee didn't want to give it to him. He came out of there and said timeout. That's a second timeout already for the Redskins. In nope. fact, I think they're going to say that he didn't take a timeout. I was going to say because the referee didn't blow the whistle for him when he said timeout. He's called for delay of the game. And so the, the clock still hasn't started. After that first down to Monk, confusion has reigned. Clark comes out. And they go with their three tight end set up now. Monk, the lone wide receiver, to Biner. Got a blocker in front. We'd like to welcome those of you who watched Green Bay and Tampa Bay, where the final score was Tampa Bay 26, Green Bay 14. Here in Washington at RFK, the Giants-Redskins, no score.
10 50 left to play in the first quarter. This is going to be interesting Pat here uh, Ernest Biner's going out. We don't know if Gerald Riggs can play. Uh, he's just coming in now and that could put the Redskins in a real bind. Biner the healthy guy going out Riggs, the bad back guy coming in now. Well Joe Gibbs did say to us yesterday if anything happened to Biner now we'd really be in trouble. That's Riggs. Stopped by Diossi. Working on Biner. I think the things that the Redskins want to do today they need Ernest Biner or what they really need or would like is a combination of Biner and Riggs. Riggs has a had a back thing and muscle spasm didn't practice all week. We were out of practice yesterday. He didn't do a thing yesterday and did very little of pregame warm up today. He just stood around yesterday at practice. Third and one. That's Riggs and he's got the first down and more. Near midfield. Meyer and Guyton from his safety spot made the tackle. And this is the type of the thing that the Redskins wanted to start off with. Like I said, it's a bully. Who's going to get the corner? They wanted to come out and slug it out, and they are winning the first slug fest. Yeah, because the Giants have that time of possession, boom, 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 all that stuff. The Redskins are getting it now. They've had the ball almost six minutes. Three for three on third down, the Redskins. to Jimmy Johnson it was a good throw that one was there I'll tell you one thing this offensive line of the Redskins is doing a job I mean they're establishing their run blocking they're establishing their their pass protection of course that's last play they have help here with a play fake you see when you fake the run boom that will hold the linebacker. But look at that pass protection. Look at the time Stan Humphreys had to throw that one. Biner back in the game now. Monk again in motion. Now they all get set up. Humphreys back to throw it. Eric Dorsey forces him out to forward out of the pocket. Chased by Howard and out of bounds. And about the giant 46. Picked up five yards. I like this Humphreys. I think he's a tough guy. You know, I mean, I, you, know, you know, he's one of those guys that quarterback really doesn't look like a quarterback. You know, has a little gut on him. Could have maybe been, uh, uh, you know, you think he was a, a linebacker, a nose tackle or something. But, you know, plays a little dirty. But the big thing here is that time. Certainly seems very cool, very relaxed. There's Marcus Cook. Now that's a different look. And he hasn't even played a play yet today. <laughs> Gary Clark with a diving catch. Kelvin Bryant, sorry. Thought it was Clark. Bryant yeah. out of the backfield. Well, he's the guy. In fact, Joe Gibbs calls him the best back out of the backfield catching a pass in football. That Joe Gibbs says maybe ever. That was very, very close to being on the ground. I don't know if they have a rule such as simultaneous touching, but they're going to review this one, Pat. It looked like the ball, his hands, and the ground all hit at the same time. I think his body blocked the official out of the view. But you see, he still has both hands on the ball, yep. and the ball does hit the ground. I think it's a legal catch. I mean, yet you have to be pretty close there with the naked eye, but I would think that would be a legal catch. We welcome those of you who watched Detroit and Kansas City, where the final score was Kansas City 36, Detroit 24. Here in Washington, no score is yet. Right now, they are reviewing a catch by running back Kelvin Bryant for the Redskins. It's a miraculous catch if it is a catch. He has you see that left hand how that's underneath. That's the thing that I think makes it a legal catch Pat that 
he had his left hand under the nose of the ball. And I think at some point that left hand was between the ball and the ground. But boy, are we getting picky now. Tom Dooley is the referee. After further review, the play will stand as tall. You know a word we haven't heard this year so far? Inconclusive. Yeah, that's good. If, you, if you're going to look at it, then just be conclusive. Be right or be wrong, but be conclusive. The Giants have not had the ball yet. Beiner straight ahead. They have 7.45 left to play in the first quarter. This drive started back at the Redskins' seven-yard line. You know, the other thing we haven't heard yet is a tackle by Lawrence Taylor. And I would say that two things are happening. One, the Redskins are doing a pretty good job of blocking. But number two, the Redskins are staying away from Lawrence Taylor. I think it's a combination of both. Second and eight. Taylor comes to the left side of the defense this time. And they go the other way. This is Biden. He hammers down to about the 25. Stopped by Jackson again. But a gain of 13. This is the type of game the Redskins wanted, Pat. This is the type of game Joe Gibbs wanted where you get in there, you don't make it a passing game. Even though they have become a passing team last year, they want to get in there. They want the Hawks. They want the Biners running. They want to get in there and slug it out. They want to be able to get someone on Taylor to run away from him, but stay with him. Wherever the ball goes, someone has to stay on Lawrence Taylor. That was that time, Simmons. It was right Big back. Ed Simmons. Yep. Biner again, straight ahead. Picked up three. Johnny Cooks made the stop, playing instead of Carl Banks on what they think are the running downs. You know who's playing well in there for the Redskins now is number 68, Russ Grimm. You know, he's in his 10th year. He's been injured the last couple of years, but he's starting again at guard. And, and just watching him play, he really is back to the old Russ Grimm. I mean, he got bad knees, shoulders, elbows, everything. When you talk about alignment, this guy is alignment. Second down and seven or eight. Dorsey moved unless he was pulled by somebody. I think they're going to say it was either Ed Simmons or we just saw block Lawrence Taylor or Raleigh McKenzie. It's either the right guard or the right tackle. Yep, it's right there. It's a right tackle. It was Ed Simmons. Big Ed Simmons just got a little anxious there and jumped offside. So it's second down and about 13. Riggs is the lone setback now. And the pursuit is there, led by Lawrence Taylor. That's the time you're not going to make a living doing that, are you? Running a sweep at Lawrence Taylor. They're going to run a sweep out here to the left. They're going to pull the guard and they're tackling that counter play. And maybe you can do it if you follow inside of Taylor. But you're not going to bounce out and get around the corner on Lawrence Taylor. There's a football player, but he got some mud growing out of that helmet. And he got a dirt. He got a little plot, one land growing out of there. Third and 11, Kelvin Bryant in the backfield now for the Redskins. And out of the backfield. Incomplete. Intended this time for Gary Clark. And the Redskins believe they're in field goal range. And this guy who kicks for them has had a hot year. Chibolo Miller. Very strong leg, kicks the ball high. Moschenko is the holder. He's the punter. 43 yards away. High snap. But plenty for Low Miller. 3 0 Redskins. 
Well, as you pointed out, John, that's just exactly the kind of drive they wanted to put together, the kind of game they want to have. And I'll tell you, when you have a young quarterback like Stan Humphreys starting only the second game in his life, you want him to get off to a good start, too. You know, to, and that gives him confidence because his offensive line was able to handle the Giants' defense, and his running backs were able to make some yardage. 18 plays in that drive, 66 yards. They kept the ball 10 minutes and 25 seconds. I thought the drive started back inside the 10. Well, I think it did. Wasn't there a penalty? There was a penalty uh, on the yeah, opening kickoff. Yeah. That's right. And, uh, and, and, and so they had to, and then they had a couple of penalties in there, so it was really uh, uh, quite a drive. I mean, not only the three points, but the time of possession and all those other things that you've established. Mark Ingram and Dave Meggett back deep for the Giants, and he's the guy they want to keep it away from, number 30. I think the Giants are going to count a lot on that guy today, Dave Meggett. Ryan drive kickoff back to Meggett, who makes a clean pickup, and he comes out of the pack. Meggett to about the 36 and almost broke it. Stopped by Joe Howard, Phil Sims. As usual, the giant quarterback up front, Moore, in place of Elliott, Roberts, Oates, Bob Cratch starting at right guard, Riesenberg, and Mark Bravaro at the tight end. Wide receivers Ingram and Baker, Maurice Carthon, and Otis Anderson in the backfield with Anderson deep. They start with two tight ends. to Anderson. Perhaps a yard. Not much more. Tracy Rocker made the stop. Up front, it's Cook, Grant, Rocker, and Charles Mann. The linebackers, Wilbur Marshall, Minuski, and Collins. Minuski in the middle. Mayhew and Darrell Green, the cornerbacks. Bowles and Walton, the two safety men. Green comes with Ingram. Second and ten. Sims outside of Baker. Incomplete. Mayhew, the cover man, that's where they want to go. Here's that offensive line. Jim Hannafin, of course, remember the old St. Louis Cardinal coach. Now the, the line coach of the Redskins, and if you're going to be a line coach, this is a pretty good group to be a line coach of because you not only get a line, but you get big Donnie Warren at tight end to work with. It was like another tackle. Oh, yeah. Third and ten. Baker in the backfield. And out of the backfield. Sims looking for Baker. Got it. To the 45. That's the thing the Giants were trying to get is sneak Stephen Baker into the backfield and then they call this a scat. It's just called Baker scat. You see 85 there. He's coming from out of the backfield. He can go wherever he wants. So he finds an opening in there. That time he went outside. What they did is they put make it out as a wide receiver. You know draw coverage out there and then sneak Stephen Baker in in the backfield coming out as a running back. A pickup of 18 seems to the air again. Intended for Baker who didn't break off the pattern. Sims and he just got a mix up. Flag on the play. In the secondary. Look at this, Pat. You see, usually you have a back here. Here's Stephen Baker here. They lined up in here, so he didn't get against the corner. Then he comes in here, and he can go right or left on this. That penalty was against the Giants, but watch this play. See him sneak in there? Now he sees there's no one there. He just turns out here to the left. The Redskins are going to have to figure that one out. Penalty on that last play for an illegal formation by the Giants. So that moves them back. And makes it first and 20. They have Megan in the slot this time. Hand off to Anderson. To about the 48, a pickup of three, stopped by Cook and Mann. 
Hey, this this Redskin team is a a fired up team today. You see that number 40 there? That's Alvin Walton, and he's a he's a strong safety, but he's as much a linebacker against the run as anything. On third down, he'll be deep in the pass, but if you're going to run, you better get Alvin Walton blocked. Make it again in the slot to the left. Ingram split wide right. To make it, and he hung on. Pick up of eight. Yeah, I think with Hampton out, Megan is going to be a big part of this game plan. You see him here. He's going to get there the same time as Brian Davis. Watch 34. Boom, the ball. Brian Davis. A heck of a catch by Dave Megan. Third and nine. Megan and Roussan now. In the backfield next to Sims. Flag on the play. They were in motion, I'm sure, but the Redskins get the sack. Led by Mann and Tim Johnston. Megat was moving forward. And these Redskins are fired up on this sideline. They're going nuts. But just Megan is coming forward. He doesn't get set, so that's illegal motion. And that just gives the Redskins a free rush at Sims. Landetta in the punt for the Giants. Stanley back deep, standing at the 10 for the Redskins. Welcome those of you who watch San Francisco and Atlanta where the final score was San Francisco 45 Atlanta 35 here in Washington the Redskins leading the Giants 3 nothing with a minute 19 left to play in the first quarter. Get RFK Stadium Pat Summerall with John Madden with the Redskins leading 3 nothing 42 yard field goal by Chip Low Miller. Redskins have totally dominated things so far. They've been able to control the ball. I think this is where the giant defense has to take over now and you know and, and start to get some of that dominance back. You know, stopping three and out. Another drive here, but another long drive here by the Redskins could be a long day for the giant defense. First and ten on the 20. Handoff is to Riggs. He's got some room. Riggs hammered out of bounds finally by Meyer and Guyton. The end Everson Wall. Boy, did they block Lawrence Taylor on that one, Pat. Watch Donnie Warren here. I said you couldn't get around the corner on him. He takes him on with his outside shoulder. Donnie Warren just gets that shoulder enough, and Riggs just takes it in and bounces outside and runs up the field. I don't know that Lawrence Taylor is really healed from that pull hamstring of three weeks ago because if he's healed you don't get around a corner on like on him like that although that was a good block by Donnie Warren Humphreys rolls right and it's Clark picked up just a couple of yards Renee Thompson up that's Mark Rippon who injured his knee what two weeks ago it would be three weeks, three weeks now, ago, yeah. You know, because uh, Humphrey started the uh, game against the Cardinals, then they had to bye week, and this is the third week. Mark Rippon said he wasn't sure exactly what he was supposed to do today. No one thought you know, if you're hurt, no one talks to you. What do you have to say anyway? Second and seven. Here comes Johnny Cooks. We get the ball by, uh, to rig, and they don't get much. Good pursuit. Pickup of a yard. Steve Diossi was there first. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Redskins three. The Giants nothing. And I'll tell you, you know, the A's really haven't gotten the credit they deserve. Pat, last year, they're in the World Series to win it. The earthquake. Then they win 
you know, their pennant and they have the thing about Clemens and all that stuff. Someone's going to say, hey, this is a great team. Pass batted away by Banks, a flag on the play. Gary Clark was the intended receiver. Tell you, Banks doesn't have a cast on that left hand, Pat. I think he could have intercepted that one. I think the penalty is going to be against the uh, Giants anyway. I think it is. Holding 58 defense. First down. It's pretty good if he can hold with one hand. I know it, and it has to be. It has to be the right hand because he sure as heck couldn't hold with that left hand. And that was the same hand that he knocked the ball down with. So that right hand did a lot of damage on that play. A first down at the 49. The Redskins on the move again. First and 10. Semi roll left. He's got Monk. Renee Thompson knocked him down inside the 20 at the 17. You'll see here he starts as you say. It was a little semi roll to the left, and then the Giants use that double zone. So they want to hit right down the middle of the field. Let those safeties divide. Let them get to the outside and then go right the middle. See this little roll here? Stop at the hash mark, then throw it right up between the hash marks. That's the weakness in that soft double zone. First and 10 at the 17. To Riggs. To the 11. Stopped by Jackson. I don't think the Giants have had their wake-up call, Pat, from their bye week, but the Redskins are sure ready. I mean, they are coming out here and doing what you have to do in a Redskins-Giants series. They're coming out, they're controlling the line of scrimmage, they're whipping them in the pits, and they're running the ball. And then coming up with big plays. Second down. And four. The 11. Riggs again. This time, nothing there. Eric Howard. Watch Lawrence Taylor, Taylor fly in there, Pat. 56. You're going to see him coming right into the picture. See, right now, Monk tries to block him. That's the play. See, that stopped Riggs. Then Riggs had to pull up. And then by, by the time that happened, there's four more blue jerseys. So Lawrence Taylor got two. He got that penetration in there. Third down. They need six for a first. Humphrey's back to throw. Chased out of the pocket by Taylor. A side armor thrown away. Did it for Kelvin Bryant. Well, we're just talking about... About a wake-up call, I think Lawrence Taylor got his in those last two plays. We saw in the first one. Watch him here in the pass rush this time. Just coming from the outside against Lachey. We'll see him just right here. Now, now watch the way he passed right. He gets his shoulder in and then just keeps his legs moving. See, so just get that shoulder. Boom, boom, boom. Keep going, keep going. And then make that play. Hey, once he gets that shoulder in there, he keeps those feet going. From 30 yards. No good. So the score remains. 3-0 Redskins. 3-0. An unusually hot day for this time of the year in Washington. Up in the 80s. Hey, and that guy Lawrence Taylor made two big plays on that drive there to end it because the Redskins were going. Bruce Son, the man in motion. Sims will throw. Screen pass to Anderson. Hit down by Todd Bowl. Joe Gibbs was saying to us yesterday that two people that give us fits are obviously Lawrence Taylor and the other is Phil Sims. Yeah, you know, they've they've had so many times where they've gotten ahead or they've they've done well. 
And then Phil Sims comes back and, and, and brings the Giants back in the third and fourth quarter. Said that he has really been a killer for them. And he has as much respect for, I think, Phil Sims as anyone in this league. Pitch back to Anderson. Alvin Walton and Kurt Govea bring him down. There's a tough guy, that Alvin Walton. You know, he's he's a safety you don't hear a lot about, but again, if you're going to run, he's the guy that can give them eight men up. And that's what they do. They put him up there. They have their seven front guys, which would be their four down linemen and three linebackers. Then they add him as the eight. Then when you add him, you not only put a good tackler, but you outman him by one in the box. Brings up the third and five. Eric Moore playing left tackle. Got out of his stance a little too quickly. Now that's a tough thing. Jumbo Elliott has a bad leg. Is going to miss some. So they had to move Eric Moore from right guard to left tackle. And that's that open side. There's Jumbo Elliott right there. John Elliott right there in the green shirt. But probably the toughest position to pass block from is the left offensive tackle. Megan in the backfield with Sims. To Baker. And he is, well, it's a foot race. He even outran Darrell Green, although Green was gaining 80 yards. There's a the guy, Stephen Baker. I'll tell you who made a good block. They made Meggett stay in. They try and get Meggett out on that. Meggett had to stay in and block. <laughs> he really got pushed right back into Sim, but he held his own. Watch little Dave Meggett. They're going to make him block. You see? Now, he sticks his head in there, and I'll tell you, he really blocked. He holds Coleman off so that Sims can get rid of the ball. I mean, he ends up back there, but he did the job that he had to do. Bar for the extra point. Hostetler holding. Three plays, 80 yards. A very happy Phil Sims. Seven three, the Giants take the lead with 10:21 left to play in the first half. That's the longest touchdown pass, touchdown pass in Phil Sims' career. Here's Stephen Baker. Yeah, that was the longest pass, but he ran. That was a crossing pattern he ran, Pat. So he not only had to run the length of the field, but he also had to run all the way across the field. Bars kickoff. Goes to Brian Mitchell, who does not bring it out of the end zone. The Redskins will take over at the 20. Darrell Green was gaining. He had been the fastest man in the league. Probably still is. You think you are. Here's the touchdown. Pat. Look, here's Stephen Baker. Now watch the effect of a crossing pattern. His own guy knocks the cover guy off right here, Brian Davis. But watch what a crossing pattern does. You see, he comes under. Now, all the way across. Now, watch. Boom, right there. See, his own guys collide. Then he catches a ball, and then he just outruns everyone. So he ran 80 yards one way and 50 yards across. So Stephen Baker ran 130 yards on that play. First down, Redskins, their own 20. Warren on the move. This is Biner. Down by Taylor. And then Daryl Green was talking about what happened to him and where he comes. See, after they come off, he's talking to the coaches up in the booth. Now they're talking about how you get picked or how you get knocked off on a crossing pattern. You see, he's talking to Davis right there, the guy who was covering Stephen Baker. Second and seven. Riggs now replaces Viner. That's Riggs. 
Stop by Wall. Five yard pickup. You hear that hit? That was pretty good. Everson Walls comes up and got there. Riggs catches a ball and boom. I mean, that was a pop there. Five yards rushing for the Giants, 92 for the Redskins. But the one big shot from Sims to Baker. Bill Belichick. I think Lawrence Taylor came alive in this second quarter. Third and short. Riggs is the runner. I don't know if he got it or not. I don't think he did. You know, the guy, you see number 99 in there, that's Steve Diossi. He is really a good run player. And when the offense comes out, he has the ability, boom, to attack the offense. <laughs> then, like all goofy inside linebackers, they make a good hit and laugh about it. Although I think he's arguing about a spot, huh? Well, he did get the first down. And it looked like Diossi knew that. He got that mask on there. He did that because he has, he's sensitive to sun. And in training camp, when he was with the Cowboys, he used that visor like a, like, like sunglasses. And he just kept playing with it. Taylor goes left in this defensive setup. Fake was to Biner. And they get the ball out to Biner, who makes a good move and gets a Redskin first down. Diossi knocked him out of bounds. 14-yard game. Biner made that move on Pepper Johnson. He had old Pepper going in when Biner was going out. That's the thing, you, you, know, you know, for a linebacker, anyone, the toughest thing you have to do on defense is open field tackling. Number 52 is out there. He's a big old 250-pound guy trying to tackle a running back in the open field. Biner got him going the other way. 7.45 left in the second quarter. Here's the old counter play with Biner. He cut back inside and made something out of not much. Myron Guyton got him down. He picked up four. He made Taylor miss again. That's the second time they, he's gotten outside of Taylor on that side. That usually doesn't happen. I think that time Taylor kind of slipped. Watch Taylor on the side here, make a little block, then he's going to come to the outside here, and he goes to make the move, and he just doesn't get there. Biner just outruns his reach. Second and six. Seven-three Giants. Riggs is the runner again. That's Riggs. Looking for some room. Diossi again made the stop after a gain of three. That was Monty Coleman there getting stretched out on the sideline. He was the guy Dave Meggett blocked. I think that was one of the biggest plays of the game thus far for the Giants is Meggett, who usually goes out for a pass, staying in and blocking Coleman, who was blitzing, so Sims could hit that big one to Stephen Baker. Hadn't meant for that, he would have never gotten it off. You know, usually those little backs like May, they, they don't have a lot of rocks in their pockets. They're not expected to block linebackers very often. Monk in motion, Kelvin Bryant in the backfield. Looking for Bryant, and picked off by Pepper Johnson. Got a few words for Kelvin. Pepper had something to say about that one. He got he got fooled in the open field running, but watch here. He's out there. The guy they try and throw to on that situation is Kelvin Bryant out of the backfield. He threw that one right to Pepper Johnson, who had great coverage. 7-3, the Giants lead the Redskins. Right here, here's Pepper Johnson right here. Boom, he goes right with him and makes the interception. It looks like confusion there. Now they run. He just comes out of the backfield. Pepper just stays underneath him all the way, and Humphreys throws it underneath him. 
Now watch the way the guys have to block. We talk about make it. Here's Ricky Sanders here. Watch what he has to try and do. Now that's a tough assignment. You hit Taylor first, then we'll have Donnie Warren get him. Then if there's still something left, you come back and get him again. Oh, little guys blocking. This must be a big game. Sims to throw. Rush screen pass. Damaris Carthon. And Carthon down the sideline in Redskin territory. Knocked out of bounds by Todd Bowl. That's one of the things that the Giants are doing better this year than they ever have that I can remember. Screen pass. The screen pass. Well, I think it started a year ago when they got Dave Meggett. <laughs> And then this year they got Rodney Hampton and they got some guys that if you get a screen out there to them can, can run it mm -hmm. for 50 or 60 yards. Second and two. Carthon again gets the carry close to a first down maybe not. You know the way this game has been going Pat in the first half that time of possession on. It's just the opposite of what it's been. You would expect the Redskins to have the big play and the Giants to have the time of possession. The Giants have had the big play and the Redskins have had the time of possession. Just over five minutes remaining. Giants leading at 7-3. Third and one. Is that group of hogs for the Redskins? to Carthon. He's got the first down. Todd Bowles came up to make the stop after a gain of five. You know one thing about third and one with the Giants and Bill Parcells as a coach you think you're going to have two shots at it because he'll usually go for it on fourth down. And usually makes it. I think this year they're five for five. So that's that that is a big plus when you when you get third and short, you know you have two downs to get it. Ingram on the move. Slant to Baker. Couldn't hang on. Mayhew and Bowl sandwiched him. <laughs> they did. They whipsawed him in there. That'll that'll draw a whipsaw when you bring a little guy inside who has just scored a big touchdown against you. And you throw him that slant, that's going to bring some white jerseys on you quickly. Sims is five out of seven. Second down. Going for Baker. Just out of his reach. Mayhew the defender. I know one thing they were going to do is they were going to work on Mayhew for the big one. That was the one they went to him on. Let's watch a blocking here on Charles Mann, number 71. He's the outside guy, the big pass rusher here for the Redskins. Doug Riesenberg is blocking him. Mann's going to come with a, a tough right club. Now, when you hit with that right club, you got to get the feet going inside, too. He got the club and didn't bring the feet. 32. A 10, I beg your pardon. 409. Left to play in the first half. Sims out of the spread. Baker. That's going to be close to first down, but most certainly it got him at field goal range. Again, they're going, they're finding out where Martin Mayhew is, number 35. Of course, part of it is because Mayhew's just a second-year guy. The other part of it is it's away from Daryl Green. I'll tell you, the Redskins are not going to let Megat get a part of this game. They blitzed him, made him block. That time, Monty Coleman just came in and jammed him right in the line. Shoved him. It was a first down. And Stacy Robinson is in the game as a wide receiver. Way up at the top. Anderson and nothing there for him. Tracy Rocker. Here's the giant number one draft choice. Out with a bad ankle, Rodney Hampton. So key 
a receiver coming out of the backfield hasn't had a chance to run that many times. I tell you when you play against a four man line the holes don't stay open very long. But you see a hole and then watch out quickly white jerseys close it. Minuski filled it in a hurry. Sims to throw. Navarro is hammered but held on. Yeah, you're talking about the guys the Giants lost. Jumbo Elliott, Rodney Hampton, we just saw Dessa Turner is out. And then the guy they picked up was Mark Favaro, of course, who was out the last game against the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Oof. That was Martin Mayhew, had just been beaten a couple times. He really put a lick on Bavaro. Eight or nine yards, third and one make it. At about the 22. Giants leading 7-3. Anderson and Carthon, the running back. Roscoe in motion. Give this to Anderson. And that last lunge might have gotten it. I don't know. This will be an interesting call here, Pat. I think it's going to be short. I don't think he did get it. We talked about Bill Parcells going for it on fourth down. Do you go for this one? Two-minute warning. Giants leading 7-3. He'll have time to think about it. RFK Stadium, the home of the Redskins. Pat Summerall with John Madden. Fourth and short, Giants from the Redskins, 22. And it looks like they've decided to go or at least try to pull them offside. That's what they were trying to do. They got up there and they were going to give him that hard count. They gave him that hard count and the Redskins jump. The officials are talking about it now to see if they jump or if they were called off or pulled off. I think that's on the Redskins. Defense. First down. That's the other thing you can do. You can go for it or you can just get up there. And give him some motion. You see the head bob there, a little head bob of Sims. When he gave that hard count, boy, he got two of them to jump, one on either side. Look at that Sims reaction to the penalty. You know what he was trying to do. First and ten Giants from the 17. Two minutes left. Anderson lunges to about the 11. Now they've got the advantage in that those timing rules change inside the two-minute warning. So they'll have some more shots. Well, they got that, and plus they have all their timeouts remaining. So what I would I would think, Pat, that the Giants are probably thinking about here is to use up time so that they can get a score and then the Redskins don't have any time to do anything with it after that. Second and five at the 12. To Anderson. To about the nine. Maybe the eight. Tracy Rocker again. Well, the one thing, of course, the Giants can think about here, even before they think about a touchdown, is they can still think about a first down. You see, they're like third and two. And you know, so they could get the first down and not get the touchdown. The Giants have changed all their signals here, signals to the quarterback, because Jeff Rutledge has gone as a backup quarterback for the Giants over to the Redskins. Third down. Anderson again, flag on the play. Anderson got the first down. And that's in the area of offensive holding, the greatest, the greatest drive stopper in the NFL. Yeah, boy, they threw, you know, they never used to throw that on the run, Pat. I remember. And then now they get down there in the goal line and they throw That'll drive a oh, coach man. crazy. 61 Third down. Call against Bob Cratch. Of course, he's the right guard, and they were running inside. 
I know that drives Coach Craig. I know that feeling. I've been there. You got everything going. You're moving. You're boom, boom, boom. And then you get that holding call. Does that stop a drive? Makes it third and 12 instead of a first down. This is the Giants seven. The Redskins three. Here's that last penalty. Here's the holding penalty. This is Cratch right here. Here's the guy who calls it. And you watch this. I don't know where the holding is. But that umpire is looking at him there, and I don't know what he sees, but he throws the flag, and that's the drive stopper. Brings up third and 12 from the 19. Megat to Sims left. Nope. It was Ingram who had it momentarily and was hit and couldn't hang on. Darrell Green was the nearest defender. Hey, this was this was quite a strike here. Good pass protection again. The Giants have been getting good protection for Sims. He does what he does has to. He throws the strike right in there. So I tell you, that's pretty good defense here, hitting the receiver just as the ball gets there. That was Brad Edwards. 36 yards away for Barr now with Ostepper holding. Hostetler. Andre Collins knocked him out of bounds. You know, the Giants had an organized fight. I don't know if this was one, though, Pat. This really didn't look like one. Just watch the play here. And see, there's no one going out. It looks like Hostetler dropped the ball. Looks like the snap might have been low. Yeah, and then someone goes out to the left, but he has no one here to throw to in the right side. Redskins will take over. It's in a fake field goal. Just watch. It's just a, a low, bad snap. Jeff Hostetler can't handle it, and then he just has to run with it. First and ten Redskins, and they'll just run it out. They're backed up to their own ten. And so, they'll head for the locker room. That's the end of the first half with the score. The Giants seven, the Redskins three. Conservative game. Offsides on the kickoff. It's going to be Megat to handle it. And I think it was the Giants who were offside. But he's cut down by it. Mays. And they probably won't accept this penalty. There's a man like Megat back there. I think you're right, and that's really good field position. We got offsides. Number 20 on the kicking team. Offsides, number 47 on the receiving team. We will kick it again. Well, they don't have a choice. They have to do it again. Do I have a clock? The day started in the 80s. Now, as the sun goes down in the nation's capital, it's cooling off just a bit. Both teams, I'm sure, grateful for that. Well, that's one we've used for years. That fact, they haven't returned a kickoff for a touchdown since 1972 when it was a guy named Rocky Thompson. Low Miller. Seven three, the Giants lead. Ready to go again. This one looks okay. Make it. Yard back in the end zone is going to come out with it. And he's cut down again by Joe Howard this time. He picked up about four yards on that re kick. Here's the book on Phil Sims coming up by distance. Well, you look under 10 yards. He was six for six. He was perfect. 10 for 20. He was one out of four. But remember, this thing is how far they throw it. So that big touchdown was in that area. 
and then over 20 he hasn't completed any he's only thrown one but that's when to Stephen Baker was in that 20 yard area under 20 yard area. seven of 11 first and 10 Giants right at the 20. Maurice Carthon was the move man the handoff is to Anderson straight ahead to about the 23 got by Marcus Cook four yard gain. I think that sometimes you get teams that know each other too well Pat and I think that's what we see here and the better you know someone the more conservative you become because you remember offensive plays that didn't work or defenses that didn't work or blitzes or those types of things and I think that first half is the effect of that and don't forget they have to play again up at the Meadowlands in two weeks. Yeah I think that's stupid. I mean these two teams finishing playing each other two weeks from now. Anderson again stopped at the line of scrimmage. Fumble they're saying and they are correct. The Redskins have it at about the giant 25. Dragging each other out of the pile. Robert Johnson. Marcus Cook came up with the recovery. A break for the Redskins. Talking about Marcus Cook there's Jack Kent Cook the owner of the Redskins. He's trying to figure out who it was that he saw himself on television. Marcus Cook is the guy that came up with it. He's the the right end number 74. See him in the middle of play. He just goes right down there into the pile. The next time you see him he comes out of it with the ball and the Redskins will have it at the giant 25. Wait until he takes that helmet off. You're going to see a lot of hair come out of there. Apparently they're reviewing this recovery. I don't know what they're going to be able to see in that pile of humanity. The only thing you can think is whether the knee was down before the fumble came out. And of course the thing you don't know even if you review is when did the whistle blow. And that would be someone down in the field and they've already said on the field that it's a fumble. You're going to see a hand right there come in and strip the ball. So the ball has started out long before he goes down. Marcus. After further review, the play will stand as called. It's Washington ball one down. Marcus Cook looks like he's been away hunting somewhere. Well, you know, he did go away. Remember a yeah. couple of years ago, he left the team and quit. He wanted to go be a carpenter. He went up north. He went up to Idaho or Washington someplace. He was going to build houses or log cabins. Redskin first down. Fake was to Biner. And he got it, gets it to Biner at about the 15. Pepper Johnson on the stop. Nine yard pickup. I think the thing the Redskins are thinking here is they have to get in there with a touchdown. They got down there. You see the score seven to three. They got down there once. They kicked the field goal the first time. Second time they had to settle for a field goal attempt. They missed it. Now this is their third time and thus far they only have three points. Well you look around the scores that the rest of the league put up today. A lot of high scores very high scores. Then you look at this one and then you wonder if maybe coming off a bye can cause something like yeah. that. Finer right side first down. Pepper Johnson again made the stop. We're at RFK Stadium in Washington. Sold out and loud as usual. 13.01, 13 minutes now remaining in the third quarter. First down, Redskins at the Giant 13, trying to recapture the lead. Humphrey's back to throw a flag on the play before it ever got started. You know, one of the things you see Johnny Cook's in there, we realize Carl Banks Ball is start, still out. 63 offense. First down. Ball against Raleigh McKenzie, and again, that's a killing penalty. Yeah, we saw that shot just a little while ago of Carl Banks over in the over in the sideline. It looks like you know, he came in with a dislocated wrist, had surgery on it during the bye week, had a pin put in it, then a pin taken out. As he was standing there in the side, it looks like it's hurting him right now, the way he's holding it up there, uh, what they call uh, gingerly. 
First and 15. Take to Biner again. Humphrey. Incomplete. Intended for Ricky Sanders. Jackson and Guyton were close by. Hey, the one thing that Humphreys can do is he can drill that ball. I'm impressed with Stan Humphreys. He may be a guy who may be a starter on this team for a long time. I remember when Bobby Bethard was a general manager here and was when they had all the quarterbacks here, and he said he thought Stan Humphreys was the best of the bunch. Cooks goes out. Banks come in, comes in. And comes on a blitz. Humphreys over the head of Jimmy Johnson. You know, Joe Gibbs was worried about this area of the field yesterday, Pat. Remember, inside the 20, they call it the red zone. And he said, in football, there's nobody that plays better pass defense than the Giants play inside the red zone. They play a loose zone, so there's no place to get the ball into the end zone. He said, you have to throw it in. He said, they can rush four guys and zone with eight and get a good pass rush in a loose zone. And that used to be unique. No one ever zoned inside the point. The first guy I remember doing it is Don Shula. And they've been doing it well for a long time, the Giants. But, you know, Joe Gibbons say that the Giants may be the best of all time. Here's Humphreys on the rollout, throwing for the corner for Ricky Sanders, who came up with a one-handed catch, but out of bounds. Heck of a catch. Yeah, and that was probably the type of thing that they thought they had to do was roll and get something, but... Had they been playing that one in Canada, it would have been okay. <laughs> you see, there was some giant fan down there. Looked like he was defending Sanders and yelling at him after the play. How'd that guy get seats like that right on the field? Well, you got to be ingenious, I guess. 35-yard field goal attempt by Lomilla. This one is good. And it's a one-point game with 12.01 left in the third quarter. It's the Giants 7, the Redskins 6. Coming up Tuesday night, game one of the World Series. 8 o'clock Eastern time, the A's against the Reds. Seven six, the Giants lead the Redskins. Kick by Low Miller this time. They will chase Megan all the way back to the back of the end zone. Flag on the play. Back up about the 25 yard line. Redskin drives six plays. They only picked up seven yards. They got a 35 yard field goal from Low Miller. He's two out of three today. Well, you know, you can either say that that's the Redskins not taking advantage of opportunities or. The Giants playing great defense after giving up a turnover. By the illegal use of hands, number 43 on the receiving team. David Whitmore. And he'll put the Giants back to their own 10 yard line. Discussion with the officials continues. Carl Banks trying to elevate that hand, see if he can get the swelling out of it. Jim Hannafin over there talking to the Redskin offensive line, trying to figure out how they can get a touchdown against this giant defense the next time they get an opportunity. I still don't know what's going on. They're bringing the ball back up to the 35 yard line. There could have been an offsetting penalty. There could have been another flag on the play, Pat. Had to be. And one of those things where you got this on this side and that on the other side. So you're going to go back and do it again. Well, Tom Dooley is the referee. And we just haven't heard yet. Giant. There's no one on the field. Now no. the Giants are coming on. Now the Redskins are coming on again. 
Now this is a kickoff return team coming on and the kicking team coming on for the Redskins. Yeah, but they're kicking it from the 45 yard line. Whatever it is, it made Wilbur Marshall laugh. Oh, it's Maggot and Ingram. Back deep for the Giants, and Low Miller will kick it again. So it is a 10 yard penalty against the Giants, but the Redskins get it on the kickoff. They get it again. Out of the end zone, and they'll come back to the 20 this time. Redskins scoring summary. Low Miller. The field goal in the first quarter. The Giants took the lead on an 80 yard pass from Sims to Baker. And then Low Miller just kicked the 35 yarder at 7 6. England's the man in motion. Sims is going to throw. Intended for Howard Cross. You know who's been quiet today is Mark Bavaro, Pat. Bavaro's never really done big against the Redskins. They always have done a good job of holding them up, so they have to get to other guys. They got Cross here, so they had two tight ends. This time they hit him. Does he have control? Bobble, bobble, foot, second foot? No. I would say that should not be a completed pass. Because by the time... He had control of the ball. He didn't get the second foot inbound. I think they're going to review it again. Right now, it's second down and four, unless they say it was incomplete. They now control, and then the left foot's out. Tom Dooley's the referee. I like Tom Dooley, he puts an R in Washington. Yeah. He set the play clock to 17 seconds. This is not the game clock now, this is a play clock. You know, there's Gary Clark sitting behind the bench. That's like, you know, you used to do in school. I don't know how many passes the posse has caught today. But if the posse doesn't catch a lot of passes, then they have to sit on the on the bucket back there. The go posse hasn't gone, but they're popular. But they are still in the middle of a review. Here comes Tom Dooley. We have a reversal. It's an incomplete. Yeah, that was right. Uh, you know, he just didn't have control of the ball. Howard crossed him uh, when he went out of bounds. So it makes it second down and 10 back from the 20 again. This is going to come down to the fourth quarter. Yeah. Then this thing's going to heat up. Then we're going to get some real fur flying around here. We're having a tough time getting the engine warmed up. <laughs> Sam's for Bavaro. Turn it on, Mark. Daryl Green. Yeah, they just waited and waited. You said that Bavaro has been quiet. Then they hit that seam pass. Again, it's going to be right up the middle, right between the hash marks. See him get off the line of scrimmage. Just boom, a little move here, and then right up past Alvin Walton, and a perfect pass by Phil Sim. Now all he has to do is outrun the rest of these Redskins. Or any of the Redskins. And if he outran number 28, Daryl Green, you would have a story. But I'll tell you one thing about Bavaro. Here at the end, he knows he's going to get caught. Watch him tuck it away. There's no way he's going to lose that one. The reverse coming to Lee Roussan. Who is cut down at about the 12 by Martin Mayhew. A gain of six. 
Hey, the Giants are becoming the big play guy. They don't have the time of possession, but boom, they hit that big one just then to Mark Bavaro. Of course, we remember in the first half, they hit the big one to Stephen Baker. Going to bring up second and four at the 13. That, by the way, was the longest reception of Mark Bavaro's career. Anderson cuts back. Otis Anderson to about the four. Bowles and Edwards on the stop. He's got eight yards. You know, sometimes you do that little dip in there, and that's the thing that throws off the pursuit of the defense. You know, as you watch Otis Anderson, he started up to the right side or towards the middle, and then went boom, 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 and then hit it back towards the left. Watch how he starts to the right. Now, sometimes this little stutter step right in there, in fact, there was a collision with Phil Sims, just throws the defense off enough that you can get a big game. First and goal at the five. Anderson from Sim. The Giants are signaling touchdown, and now the officials do too. As Bavaro limps off. I'll tell you, the middle of that line, oh, that giant line just took the Redskin defense and just pushed it right back into the end zone. You talk about blocking in the pits. Watch this line of scrimmage move. Watch the blue jerseys just take the white jerseys back. Back, 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 all the way to the goal line. And then a great effort right at the end by O.J. Anderson. Bar for the extra point. Fourteen six. The Giants get their second touchdown of the day. The only two. Nine ten left to play third quarter, and it's fourteen six. Back at RFK, the Giants just scored seven. Uh, fourteen six to score. Nine ten left. Big play. Sims to Bavaro. Bar. Short kick. Brian Mitchell bounced around at about the 25 yard line by Steve Diossi 14 yard return I think this is a time now Pat after the Giants got that score now and 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 have gone up 14 to 6 I think that the that the Redskins now instead of the ball control possession they have to think of getting the ball to the posse. I mean, to Art Monk, to, to Gary Clark, to Sanders. They have to get the ball to those guys starting from here on the rest of the game. Clark and Sanders are in the game. Monk is not. Humphrey. Diving attempt by Clark. Incomplete. You know, if you look at, at what the, the posse, these three guys have done going into today, you know, they have really been the offense of this Redskin team. And then look what they've done today. Gary Clark's only had one pass for three yards. Art Monk has had two. And Ricky Sanders hasn't caught a, caught a pass. So they have to get Humphreys into the game, and they got to get those three guys in there. And Art Monk is standing on the sideline at the moment. Humphreys incomplete. Clark is saying he's well, was held by Banks. It didn't make any difference because John Washington knocked Stan Humphreys down. I mean, he came in, Humphreys was looking, and John Washington hit him and knocked him down. Let's watch Gary Clark on this. He's coming from a, a slot position, and as you said, Banks only has one good hand. As that was that right hand, he knocked him down. That was beyond five yards, so that wasn't legal. Elvin Bryant now the game. And so is Art Monk. Humphreys back to throw. Dumps it out to Kelvin Bryant, who makes a couple of people miss. With some very fancy moves. 17-yard pickup. 
And that's his job, Kelvin Bryant's job, KB they call him. His job is to come in on third down, line up in the backfield, and get open and pick up first down. First down, Redskins at their own 42. Watch this. I'll tell you, he has good moves. I mean, this is what he can do. He can not only get open and catch, but he can make guys miss. And if you see that, he made a couple miss to pick up that first. Fake to Biner. Humphrey comes out of the pocket and slides near another Redskin first down. Hit by Taylor. And I'll tell you, the one thing you teach a linebacker when he comes, you never, never jump. Hey, it was Johnny Cooks. He's going to come in. Watch him. He has Humphreys, and he leaves his feet. Watch him right there. He goes up. Never, 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 ever jump. And then you see what happens, and he pulled the ball down, and whack, he picks up nine yards. Second and short. Finer behind Humphrey. Johnny Cooks has played nine years. He ought to know that. And off to Finer. He's got some room. To the Giant 39 before he's stopped by Greg Jackson. Another Redskin first down. Another gain of nine. They still say the Redskins have to get the posse into this game. Then the other thing, I would start trying to hit shots when I got to about the 30 because if you're if you're snake bit on that 20 yard line in, why not try and hit them before you get to the 20? Very logical. Riggs replaces Biner. And the handoff is to Riggs. Hard running by Gerald Riggs. Eight yards picked up. Done mostly on his own. Stopped by reason. Well, Gerald Riggs finished that run off. You can always tell the way the piles go. And when Riggs hit into it, the piles went backwards. What a running back never wants to do is, is get hit and have the pile go the way he just came from. Looks like Riggs and uh, Biner are both fired up. They're alternating for each other. Neither one of them want to come out when the other guy comes in. Second down and two. This is Biner with an option pass is wide open to Ricky Sanders. Touchdown. Ricky Sanders hadn't caught a pass. This is the first one, run pass. You fake like you're running, you just stop and pull up. The corner, who should be covering Sanders, reads run, he sees the handoff, he comes up to make the tackle, and Sanders is 20 yards behind him. Low Miller for the extra point. Good. And again, it's a one-point game. 14-13 Giants. There's the posse. Ricky Sanders just put the Redskins within one. The option pass from Viner from 31 yards away. Low Miller's kickoff is a line drive. Megat gets a good bounce right from the goal line. He is hit inside the 20 by Andre Collins. Let's watch the touchdown now. Here's Viner. He's going to get the ball in the handoff. Guard and tackle pull. Now what happened here? The safety, the corner reads it. The safety reads it. They both come up. Ricky Sanders gets deep. See now, see what they read? They start out here. They read run. They read guard, tackle, pull. See how they all come up? Look, everyone's up. Boom. Ricky Sanders is behind them. And this place is rocking now. First and ten. Otis Anderson, the long setback. Sims had to tell Bart Oates, the center, what the snap count was. Flag on the play. Sims on a rollout. 
And steps out of bounds. You hear that noise, Pat? You know, the, the Giants practiced in Giant Stadium this week, and they had a, a tape of stadium noise. And I don't know that what they practiced against was any worse than they just got on that down there. I don't think it could be. Offsides, 58 defense. Watch that. Wilbur Marshall jumped offside. On Friday, Giant Stadium was rocking despite the absence of any fans at the practice. Stadium personnel played a recording of Denver crowd noise over the 22,000 watt sound system approximating a, a noise level on the field of up to 95 decibels. And it's got to be up close to that right now here at RFK. First and five Giants at the 25. Sims to throw. Outside Bavaro. Not enough for the first. Alvin Walton knocked him out of bounds. Over the years, this guy has done a heck of a job of coaching really? this Redskin team because you think of, you know, the different quarterbacks he's had, the different defenses he's had, the different players and problems and ups and downs and, you know, winning two Super Bowls. And no matter who you talk to in the league, they always say one thing about the Redskins, they're well coached. That's here live today. It's off the meter. Second and three. Anderson. Hit by Walton, but close to a first down. I think he got it. Wilbur Marshall was also there. Phil Sims was telling us that, that uh, sometimes you get in here and it's so noisy, especially when you're down towards one end zone or the other, that you can't even hear in the huddle. The guys can't even hear him call the plays like right now in the huddle. This was Friday at Giant Stadium on the left, and this is today at RFK and getting louder. So you can't practice what you're going to play. Sims to throw on first down and has Maurice Carthon. Carthon steps out of the tackle. Here comes Darrell Green. Down at the five is Maurice Carthon. Hey, one thing, there's no one better, I don't care, at throwing seam passes than Phil Sims. They hit different guys in the seam. Just watch this one. We'll just let it go here to start off, and we'll see what a seam pass is. Now, if we can stop it right here, we'll see. Here's the seam right here. You get the defense here. Carthon just runs right up in that seam that is created by the zone defense, and Sims hits him between the corner and the safety. He's done that to Bavaro. He's done it to Carthon. And of course, we've seen him do it over the years to many, many guys. 63 yards. And a timeout called by the Giants. First and goal from the five. That's Maurice Carthon's longest reception of his career. 14 13, Giants by one. You can hear the noise from RFK all the way down at the Washington Monument. Yeah, but they don't have to call plays. That's right. 14-13, 63 yards from Sims to Carthen, 61 yards Sims to Bavaro, 80 yards to Baker. First and goal from the five. Anderson, close. I'll tell you, if the Giants uh, get one in here, though, this place will go quiet. You won't need anything to, to measure the noise on that. The inside of this giant line is doing a good job today. Bart Oates, William Roberts, Bob Cratch in there in the middle. They're getting a good push on that Redskin defense, especially down in this short yardage and goal line area. Second and goal at the two. Again, it's Anderson. Gotta be looking at him. what they were looking at. Touchdown, Bavaro. And Bavaro, over the years, has really not had big games against the, the Redskins, but today he's had two big plays in this quarter. Watch him. See, it's a, it's a play fake, then a bootleg, 
Then he comes out here. Guevara starts like he's going across, then just works his way out to the right side. You fake the run, then the quarterback bootlegs the other way, then you go headbutt a guy without a helmet. That's an advantage. Barr's extra point is good. And it's 21-13, Giants. Watch this. This is a bootleg. Fake to your backs going that way. Go the opposite way. And then have your tight end all alone in the end zone. Third quarter has been good to Bavaro. Three catches for 64 yards and that touchdown. If you look at what a bootleg is, you get both the backs going this way. Then you get the quarterback faking, bootlegging out here, and then the tight end coming like he's going here, boom, and then sneaking out here, and he'll be wide open there. You see both backs go that way. See Bavaro, he just kind of bumped into his own guy, and he's wide open there. The guy has really been beat up the last couple of years. Not Steve Diossi. Mark Bavaro. Operations on both feet or shoulder. Ankle, knee. And you wonder how long, how long he'll play, but the guy just keep bouncing, you know, just keeps bouncing back. And then when he is there and when he's healthy, he's a big force on this offensive team, not only as a receiver, but one of the best blocking tight ends in football. Brian Mitchell at the five. Very nearly broke it. Flags come flying from everywhere. Matt Barr tripped him up. 30 yard return. Whatever it was, all the officials saw it, Pat, because they threw three flags on that play. Well, the Giants did something. They were really caught dirty. I think it was a face mask. Has to be. But they, I mean, they pelted. They pelted him with three flags on it. I think they call Matt Barr for the face mask. Face violation. mask. Five yard penalty. That would be something you Number don't see very often. On the kicking team. First down. What is a kicker even doing around a face mask or a ball carrier? Matt Barr just jumped up to him. I mean, he just jumped on him. That that could have been the saving tackle, though, because Mitchell was breaking through that hole. So Matt Barr had to. And if you're a kicker, you got that little single bar like that, you're just taught just grab anything and hold on to it. First and 10 Redskins at their own 40. Two minutes and 17 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Riggs. For three yards. Stopped by Eric Dorsey. I still say the same thing. The Redskins have to get the posse back there. They got to, they've had one to Ricky Sanders so far. That's been a touchdown. I think they got to get the ball to Monk, Sanders, and Clark somewhere in these drives the rest of the game. Brings up second and seven. Monk and Sanders come left. This is the three wide receiver package. Clark is split wide to the right. To Sanders. Renee Thompson up to stop him. Didn't fool anyone. Well, Re Renee Thompson was fooled that last time, no one that run pass by Biner to Sanders. So they're working on him. You know, the young guy playing corner. There he is up again. That is a heck of a play. I mean, taking on the guard. Did you see Thompson, number 21? He took on the guards with one shoulder, and then made the tackle with the other shoulder. All this with a dislocated thumb. Yeah, he is a tough guy. I mean, he's a he's a card carrying tough guy in this league. Third down. They need about eight. That hummed into a game to Sanders. It was a gang of four, and again, the, the Giants use zone. Everyone knows that, so you try and hit in the seams of zones, and sometimes those seams or those gaps are very, very narrow. Now, this one hits in the narrowest of gaps, and even when that happened, was there, it sure closed quickly. A lot of guys got there in a hurry. First down, the Redskins go in a hurry. Want to run one more, one more play before the end of this quarter. And you'll have a 
chance. To Donnie Warren. Flag on the play. He's Ricky Sanders was out there wide open on the sideline all by himself, and Humphreys didn't even look at him. In fact, it was Gary Clark. Going to be against the Giants. Probably against the guy that was covering Donnie Warren, too. Just three seconds remaining. Illegal contact. Number 47 on the defensive team. It'll be first down. Greg Jackson, the Redskins will have a first down. You see, it's right at the top of the picture there, number 47. And you'll see him. Just watch him when it's going to be right there. That contact right there, it was after five yards. So that's the end of the third quarter with the score of the Giants 21, the Redskins 13. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. The Giants and the Redskins. Pat Summerall with John Madden. We begin the fourth quarter. Phil Sims, what a day he's had. 11 completions and 16 attempts for 263 yards. First and 10 for the Redskins, however, right now. We got the pass to Jimmy Johnson, a flag on the play. You know, Joe Gibbs really likes Jimmy Johnson. He, he, you know, he doesn't want to compare him to Kellen Winslow, but he says he's a Kellen Winslow type of tight end. Now, I think Carl Banks is really having trouble, not as much with the wrist hurting him, but not being able to use the hand and then using the other hand too much. Those are really difficult conditions under which to play. Holding number 55 on the defense. First down. That's reasons. Reasons look, look, looks like he's looking at something on the ground. Like he's looking at something on the ground. You see it right on the on the left side of the picture here, number 55. I don't know. That was a very brief hold. He just kind of waved him by. But then you know how sometimes you walk in and you trip over a crack in the sidewalk and you look down and laugh at reasons it was looking down. Like he tripped over a crack in the sidewalk. First and first and ten from the 31 of the Giants. Riggs with no place to go. Eric Dorsey caught him from behind. Well, I think sometimes you forget that that you know Stan Humphreys is only playing the second game of his NFL career, and you expect a lot more out of him. You know, it's easy to say you got to get the posse, but you know it's like it's like you have the bullets in your thing, but you don't have a gun, and uh, or you have a very inexperienced gun. Humphreys, 10 out of 20. Monk goes in motion. Donnie Warren comes into the backfield. Now out of the backfield. Humphreys back to throw. Picked off by Greg Jackson. Intended for Johnson. That's a play. That's where they're vulnerable. If they're going to be vulnerable, it's in that middle of that double zone. But of course, those safeties know it too, Guyton and Jackson. So they know you're going to try and hit them down between the hash marks. So they're always looking for down between the hash marks. So the Giants will take over at their own seven. Rise. The Giants 60 yards rushing, Washington 131. Phil Sims has had the hot hand, 11 out of 16. 262 yards, two touchdowns. Yeah, you know, here's that double zone. When these guys go out like this, you try and hit them in the middle, but they know it too. And watch, you see the opening there? Then Greg Jackson and Guyton both read that perfectly. Anderson, the ball carrier. A loss of a yard. Defense led by Charles Mann. You know, I think one thing that you take this giant defense kind of for granted, they play so well together, you know, and they do it so well that they kind of get a little boring, and the only way anyone ever gets in there is to trick them. 
You know, and the Redskins had that run pass on them. That's how they scored the touchdown. I think that's the frustrating thing to Joe Gibbs is they they play that tough rush on you with a soft zone and they make you stay patient. And when they get ahead of you, you can't stay patient. Second down. Sim has almost picked off by Gavea. We would have had another one point game if he could have hung on. Hey, if Phil Sims, you know, you usually think of them with the with that type of passing, but his plays today have, have been of the big variety. You know, that 80 yarder to Stephen Baker and then the big one to Mark Bavaro and and Maurice Carthon all having their biggest plays I've ever had in their life. Third and 11. Baker is in the backfield. Look out. Look out for Scat Baker. Sims is hit just as he lets it go. Intended for Megan. Sims was hammered by Wilbur Marshall. That was his read. If they were going to double Baker, he was going to try and go deep to Megan. Those were the two reads. I'll tell you, Megan did everything he had to. Maybe taking another step or two would have helped him rather than laying out. But boy, you were right. Did Wilbur Marshall hammer Sims? This will be only Landetta's second punt of the day. Stanley standing back deep for the Redskins at the 45. Good kick by Landetta. And Stanley had some blockers for a moment. And now the Redskins will take over near the giant 45 with 1240 left. A 50 yard punt by Landetta. Bob Morosco down on the coverage for the Giants. 1240 left to play. Giants 21 13. Giant record coming in was 4 0. One of the two unbeatens, the Redskins were 3 and 1. And off to Riggs. A gain of perhaps three stopped by Howard and Washington. Now we're starting to get a Redskin Giant football game. You see 77 there? Eric Dorsey, you see the jerseys hanging out and stuff like that? They're getting pretty good blocks out here at Lawrence Taylor. They'd worked on him all day. Tight end on him, guards pulling on him. That hog line is starting to get that blue defense going back a little. Second and seven. And Humphreys, the quarterback. Draw play to Rick. Wrapped up at the 40 with play calling the last two plays. Not acceptable to the crowd, but that last one I think was an audible. Well, they were trying to hit that draw in there against the pass rush, but I still say that you know the the line is controlled, the line is won, the you know the the running backs are doing well, but they're still going to have to get the ball to win this game to their wide receivers. Eleven and a half minutes left to do it. Third and four. Kelvin Bryant. Back in the backfield again. Third and four usually means Kelvin yeah, Bryant. It does, too. doesn't it? Humphreys is going to take off, chased by Banks and by Taylor, and out of bounds at about the 25 yard line. I think that was a free one for Stan Humphreys, Pat, because Carl Banks jumped offside. Watch him right down here in the bottom. He just takes off. He's in the backfield before anything happens. So whatever Humphreys does, he's, he gets a free one there. Hey, he just can't go. I mean, it's hard to play this game with one arm. You know, he's protecting that left wrist and just trying to play right-handed. Giants are keeping him in mostly. Someone's yelling at Banks in the sidelines, and he's yelling back. Giants are trying to keep him in mostly, I think, on passing down. I think someone was probably yelling about that effort, and he was reacting to what they said. First and 10 Redskins at the 27. A 
Double in the middle by Gerald Riggs. Not by Pepper Johnson. Well, you know what happens? The fans know that, that there's still 10 minutes to go, but the Redskins need two scores. And they're so used to hearing, you know, Gary Clark catching it, Ricky Sanders, Art Monk. They want those guys to do some of that. The owner of the Redskins, Jack Kent Cook, looking on. Second and eight, Monk in motion. At about the 20, flag on the play. A gain of five. Art Monk made the reception. And this, I believe, is against the Giants. Face man. Hey, Carl Banks is in there arguing. He better watch himself. He's getting a little too emotional. Face mask. 58 defense. First down. I mean, it's hard to play. It's hard to play with one hand. He's given everything he has, keeping that left arm out of there, keeping it away. They called him. That wasn't him. That was Gary Reason, right. number 55, who was on top of him. Well, let's see if someone on the bench gives Carl Banks a tough time. He just threw his helmet over there. First and 10 Redskins at the 15. And off is Definer. John Washington made the stop. And again, the bruise from this full out. Two yards. Look at Banks. I have never seen him this emotional. He's yelling at Parcells. I think Parcells is saying that the penalty was on him. Banks is telling him it's not. I think you're probably talking about what they call insubordination. Second down and eight. He's hit the band. He, I think that one went through something. <laughs> they have one less bass drum, I think, now. That Ooh. was a sound I have never heard <laughs> on a football field. I mean, I've heard him slap and crash and, and bang, but I've never heard that one. I'll tell you one thing, it scattered that band. That guy's reading the paper. I think it made a hole in something. Carl Banks is back in, Pat. They just sent him back in. Again, I think they're keeping him in here on passing downs mostly. Big third down at eight. Clark. Inside the five. Stopped by Rene Thompson. That'll be enough for a first and goal. It's just a matter of time. You just have to get the ball. You can't go into a game and not get the ball to Gary Clark. It's a matter of time. That's what Joe Gibbs can do. That's what Stan Humphreys does. You have to figure, how do we get the ball to these guys? Because these guys win games for us. First and goal at the three. And off Riggs. Reasons on the stop. He might have struggled down to the two. You know, I would think if Banks were in there, Pat, I would run the other side. Banks is over to the right. They're running to the left. I know it's in there behind Lachey, but it's at Taylor. I think I would run over there where Banks is because he's playing with one hand, and he just can't defend himself. In fact, I think maybe the Giants coaches saw that, too, and took him out. It's hard to play, but it's really tough to play goal line with one arm. Second and goal at the two. Riggs again, and he's not there. Lawrence Taylor. Hey, I think they're messing with Taylor too much. I think I'd figure out a way to get away from him. Watch the guy and instinct and read and nose for the ball and hitting and intensity and all those words. That's Lawrence Taylor. 
tell you, Steve Dias is not bad down here when you're grunting and groaning around the goal line either. Right. They will bring up a third and goal from the one. Humphrey's asking for quiet. I don't think he made it. It was Riggs, and he's close. This is going to be an interesting call now for Joe Gibbs. If it's short, because he needs two scores anyway, you take the field goal now and then come back, or you go for it on fourth down, and if you don't make it, you still need two scores. You better decide pretty soon. The emotional play is to go for it. The percentage play is to kick the field goal. Fourth and goal from about a foot. Great giant defense. Humphrey said he can't hear. Just over six minutes left now. I don't know that that's Humphreys couldn't hear, Pat, or if that's a review. Seconds. Now they were putting some time back, back on, on the, the clock. Yeah. They put two seconds back on the play clock, not on the game clock. 6.08, left to play, fourth and goal. Riggs, he's in. From a yard out. going to go on short yardage on goal line. They're going to stay on that left side. They get it blocked that time and good running by Rick. I would say the running was better than the blocking. Low Miller for the extra point to make it 21 20. Got in. 5.59 left to play. 5.59 left to play. The Giants 21. The Redskins 20. Carl Banks. Got so very upset at that last series. Low Miller set to kick it off. Make it in England back deep. Out of bounds. Tonight on CBS, you think your mayor has problems? Well, the mayor of Jerusalem has problems that could lead to World War III. How does he cope with the world's oldest urban nightmare? That's 60 Minutes tonight. That's followed by Murder, She Wrote, and then the CBS Sunday movie, Janik, Murder Seven Times. Twenty-one twenty. 5.54 left. The Giants will start from the 35. At RFK Stadium. Giants 21, Washington 20. 5.54 left to play. The Giants have it first and 10 at their own 35. Yeah, you just had a feeling, Pat, this game was going to be down in the fourth quarter just like this. And this is what football is all about. The drive, the Giants, the rivalries, the Redskins. We just think about the last five games between these two. Here's the screen pass coming to O.J. Anderson. Anderson hammers into Redskin territory. And this is the situation Joe Gibbs was talking about and Phil Sims, and he said every time, every time we get ahead, every time we get anything going, Sims comes back on it. You know, he's been doing it all day. Now, now here it is with Otis Anderson. You know, they talk about Otis Anderson too old any more years. This guy still has great moves in him. And as Bill Parcells said yesterday, there is still some gas in his tank. Yeah, I don't know how a guy can play 12 years in this league and move that well. First and 10 at the Redskins, 48. 
and he's back to throw again. Another screen pass, this time to Carthon. That one is diagnosed very well. Andre Collins led the defense. Yeah, they have to think back, and I'm sure the Redskins are thinking of those opportunities they had early. Remember, they missed the field goal second time they got down there. The Giants are thinking about that field goal they had just before the halftime. There's the Hawks over there. They have done a heck of a job, that Redskin offensive line. In fact, I think both offensive lines have done a heck of a job. It's been a battle. Second and nine. Sims to throw. The flitz coming after it. Mass interference has got to be called. Martin Mayhew all over Stephen Baker. That is a tough one because Mayhew, he did it. He knows he's guilty, but you can't let the guy get away from you. You want to cover him, so you just start covering him. You just hit him before the ball gets there. And then you kick him in the head. Hey, and that is, that is tough because... You know, so many things can happen to a corner. I mean, he can get beaten, and it's a lonely world out there. You're kind of out on an island. But sometimes you can cover the guy too well, too. Toughest position in football. Sims to Anderson. Breaks away from one. And is swarmed on. Left by Collins again. Maybe a yard. Andre Collins, of course, is a rookie, and you know, they get in these big games, and the veterans kind of have to tell them how to act. You know, you get them fired up, but you don't want to get too fired up because you don't want to do something stupid. Especially when you got a, you know, you're down by one, and the job now, of course, for the Giants is to keep the ball, and the Redskins is to get the ball back. Don't let them get another score here. Second and nine as Tillman comes in. And Maggot goes out. Out as a flanker to the right. Ten to throw it. Outside to Tillman. Ball not loose. Pass incomplete. Hammered by Wilbur Marshall. Boy, did he hammer him. You're right. If they call this a completed pass, then a hit, and that would have been a fumble. But Wilbur Marshall was on him so hard and so quickly that Tillman never did catch the ball, so it was an incomplete pass. Third down. Wilbur Marshall's throwing himself around here today. I mean, you talk about a guy with some gas in his tank. Wilbur brought a, uh, brought a full tank today. Did he ever? Third and nine. Out of the spread is Parcell. Roussan in motion. Yep. They're after him again. Pass is incomplete on the hop. This is just a little bit out of Barr's range. And the noise is a little bit out of everybody's range. Yeah, this is the thing. They made Phil Sims. They gave him the big rush. That's a Richie Pettibone thing. When they have to make the play, keep him out of field goal, gives him the big rush and makes him throw when he didn't want to. Parcells was saying yesterday he felt he had to get far to about the 33 before he'd have him take a field goal. He's at the 35. Yeah, that would be a 52-yard field goal. And I think with a one-point lead, he doesn't want to take the chance of a field goal block. Or being missed, and the Redskins get the ball back here. I wouldn't be surprised if the Giants take a penalty here and try and get the ball back deeper because it's easier to punt if you're back farther. To punt the ball inside the 20 or out of bounds. One of the original hogs, Russ Grimm. There's an offensive lineman. Man, you got your sweat going and you're sneezing and your whole body's moving. Landetta standing at midfield. Stanley back at the 10. Amy out of bounds. He signals fair catch. And the ball is down at the one. By who else? Renee Thompson. Now they're saying they're the ball. saying it's the Giants Giant ball. ball. They're saying it hit the Redskins. Stanley tried to.
to get out of the way. Had to hit him. I'll tell you, there's the best special teams player in football, Renee Thompson, number 21. We'll see the ball come down here, and it's going to hit someone right there. You see it hit right him the right leg. there in the leg. Now the ball is a live ball because it hit the Redskins. Now Renee Thompson can recover it. It hit Johnny Thomas. You talk about a turning point in a play. What a punt by Sean Landetta, and what a coverage by Renee Thompson. So it's first and goal at the one. Anderson and Carthon behind Sims. Anderson scrambles for the end zone. The second effort didn't quite get him there. You know, the funny thing about that play, I mean, it's not funny to anyone, I'm sure, because it's the biggest play of the game, but one official said it was going the other way, and one said it went that way. So there had to be an overruling down there. Hey, yeah, that's just good defense there. Minuski just got under Carthon. Yeah, he took on that lead block and knocked the lead block down, and there was no nowhere for Anderson to go. Second and goal from the one. 3.05 left to play down. Anderson again doesn't get in. Hit by a Gopea. Yeah, this looks like a gimme down here, but it's not a gimme. And and what Joe Gibbs wants, he wants a timeout now because if he knows if he can hold him to a field goal down here, that they can still beat him with a touchdown. Well, you talk about breaks. You talk about what a great play Thompson made. What a good kick by Landetta. You got to have all those things working for you if you're going to stay unbeaten in the NFL. And then they come down here with two great defensive plays by Minuski and uh, Gavea. They come down here. Now this thing gets serious for Bill Parcells. I think, I mean, I know as a coach, you never think you have a gimme. You know, it's like in golf or kicking or anything, but that looked like a gimme. And now as you get the third down, that's farther and farther away from a gimme. You know, we talked about what a big game this is this early in the year. Obviously, it's a big game, but because it's within the division, makes it even larger. Yeah, and then the fact that uh, they're going to play each other again in two weeks, and you don't want the visiting team to get the advantage, because then that makes it even one larger. 2.45 left to play. I thought that was interesting, though, that ruling where one official said that it was, you know, the Redskins ball, and the other one said it was a giant ball, and and they didn't uh, they they didn't review that one, but it did hit the Redskins, and it was a giant ball. It was the right call. But this is a big, 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 big play. Third, and it looks like about one and a half. Anderson again. He didn't get in. To about the one foot line. Alvin Walton and Brad Edwards. Now what does Bill Parcells do, Pat? Here's the thing now. Now you have a one-point lead. Again, emotion says what the heck, go for it. Percentages say again, you gotta kick the field goal. Because if you don't make it, they can beat you by a field goal. If you make it, this is good goal line defense here, but if you make the field goal, then they have to score a touchdown against you. Boy, this is a tough decision. I, thinking I know Bill Parcells, I would think that he will go for it or go out there like he's going to because he's been doing that over the years. The Redskins took this time out, by the way. So they're down to one. That's Richie Pettibone, the defensive coordinator. Assistant head coach for the Redskins. And I just read his lips. He knows they're going to go for it. The thing that he said is watch the bootleg. That's where you fake the run and Sims, you know, keeps the ball and goes outside. Which he's done once today. So I think what he wants to do is defend. They're going to go. They're going to go for the field goal. 
you know, they still could, again, down here, use a fake field goal. That's still a possibility. But they better get 11 guys out there and get them lined up. They're going to kick it. Down the middle. And it's 24. 20. The Giants. Tell you, Bill Parcells hated to do that because he likes the emotion rather than the percentage. But now he has shown his confidence in the defense. He is saying, I believe in my defense, and this Redskins team cannot score a touchdown against us. Don't forget, coming up Tuesday night, game one of the World Series on CBS starting at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. The Cincinnati Reds taking on the defending world champion, Oakland A's. Jose Rio for Cincinnati, Dave Stewart for Oakland. Tuesday night here on CBS. The A's have the starters. The Reds are supposed to have the relievers. I'll tell you, they got that guy Gibble that comes in and throws the ball over 100 miles an hour. I've never seen a guy throw the ball that fast. They call it a whip or something. That If, if Humphreys could borrow Gibble's whip, for the rest of this game, I think he'd take it and throw a long one to Ricky Sanders with the whip. Howard back deep. Along with Brian Mitchell. Bars kick off. High to Mitchell. That's the eight. A little running room. Roger Brown made the tackle. A 36-yard return puts the Redskins in good shape. This is football. This is what it's all about. This is what the NFL is all about. You know, decisions, offensive plays, defensive plays. Guys playing with cash. Going for fourth downs, kicking field goals, second guessing. Kelvin Bryant. On first down, this time in the backfield. First and ten Redskins at the 45. Three-man rush. Now they bring another one. This is Gary Clark trying to get out of bounds, and he does. Renee Thompson, a gain of six. Boy, you think about these last five games between these two and the scores. They've all been like this. You know, and that's the thing I was saying about it. You know, it's a shame that they're going to be through playing for the year in two weeks. I always say they ought to have a rule that the Redskins and the Giants ought to play at least one game when wind chill is a big discussion point. Just across the 50 of the Redskins. Here comes another giant blitz. And here goes Humphreys again. A first down. And they'll get the two-minute two minute warning before they can get off another play, I think. Four seconds. They move the sticks, and we'll get the two-minute warning. 24-20. The Giants leading with two minutes left to play in Washington. Left. The Redskins have only one. Pat Summerall here with John Madden, and I can't tell that anyone has left. I don't know why anyone would leave. I mean, where else could you have to go that would be better than what's going to happen here? Monk comes wide to the right. Sanders and Clark also on this side. Brandt in the backfield. Humphreys chased. Pass caught by Clark, who was really whacked from behind. The guy who made the big play then was Pepper Johnson. And he really hit him. I think he hurt Stan Humphreys. He's limping. Second and eight. Pass is picked off. By Jackson. That's two for him today. I think the play before, Pat, I think Stan Humphreys was really hurt when Pepper Johnson hurt him, hit him. Then he came back and threw that second interception to Jackson. And I'll tell you, the happiest guy out there is Bill Parcells because he went for that field goal. 
put the confidence in his defense then his defense comes up with two plays in a row like this. That was the second down play. Here was the first down play. Watch 52. Pepper Johnson does a spin. He's held. And watch him right here as he hit Humphreys just as he throws it. And that's a big 250 falling on you. Timeout, the Redskins. This always seems to be the story. Those turnovers. They had three today, the Redskins, none before. Story. That's all they can stop it. Well, the Giants did what they had to. They came up with the big plays when they needed them. Dan Humphreys is going to be a good quarterback in this league, but boy, when you're going in your second start and it's against this giant defense, that's a tough day. Frustrating time for Joe Gibbs. You know, it has to be. You wonder, you know, you keep looking around and now it'll be five in a row the Giants have beat them. And you say to yourself, you know you're not snake bit, but then you say, am I snake bit? You have to say that. Bill Parcells saying, now we got him where we want him. The Giants go to 5 0. Oh. There are only two unbeaten teams in the NFL his team and the 49ers. Some of the Redskins a little too stunned to even go to the locker room. So the Giants hang on beat the Redskins 24 20 a thriller. December in Cincinnati. The Bengals at 31 points in the first half, 30 in the second half. They won it with touchdowns like this by Craig Taylor, 61-7. This was Sam Weiss last year. They were never in the game and uh, in any aspect of it. And they were cocky and doing all their talking and their coach doing all of his talking and all that kind of stuff before the game and they got humiliated. A lot of guys still feel that if we get a chance to blow them out, we will try to blow them out not to punish the players, but the same coach is still there. Remember the Alamo, and they did in Texas. Sam was aware of it. Jack Party wasn't there at the time, but he was aware of it too. Warren Moon was intercepted early, and Craig Taylor, he scored a touchdown last year. Two yard touchdown here, the Bengals, and Sam Weiss lead it 7-0. What's the problem? Well, here was the problem. Warren Moon went deep repeatedly. This time to Tony Jones. Beautiful throw, 33 yards, we're tied at seven. Bengals grab a 10-7 lead on a Jim Breach field goal, but then Moon to Drew Hill. Got it, 33 yards again, they like that number. 14-10 Oilers, Tommy. Beauty of this pass, Chris, is that Moon looked the defense off as he got back into his drop, throws a perfect pass to Drew Hill for the touchdown. Bengals had problems, Eddie Brown never dressed, Tim McGee played, then had to leave because of an injury. Boomer Esaias into Rodney Holman, even when he was on, no, he was off. Richard Johnson returns it, not for 33 yards, but for 30 yards, touchdown, 21 to 10 Oilers. We see a trend starting here. Oilers get the ball back quickly. Moon deep to Leonard Harris. Watch him spin and pull it away from Carl Carter. 42 yards, 28 to 10. For Boomer Esiason, who threw for 490 last week. Today, a different story. Hit by Al Smith. It's a bad bad. Leander Knight recovers, leads to a field goal. Interesting. 31 points by the Oilers in the first half. 31 10 at the half. These were Boomer's numbers. Second half, the Oilers and Bruce Matthews and company. Yeah, we're this is all right. You know that? Warren Moons or Ernest Gibbons. Tommy, where do you go to school? Louisville. Nice play. And the kid from Louisville gives Billups a little shake and bake at the line of scrimmage. Billups goes inside, Gibbons outside, touchdown. 38 to 10. Ensuing kickoff. Mitchell Price is met by number 94, Glenn Montgomery. Right there! And look at the helmet goes off and look at Montgomery with the helmet. Get that out of here. 
Oilers back on offense soon. Move. Hey, with Jeffrey. Touchdown. 45-17. Five different Oilers caught Warren Moon touchdown passes. Warren for the day. Eclipse the 20,000 yard barrier for his career. We should say in the NFL. First to do it in the NFL and the CFL. Pay up time. Big time. 48-17. The Oilers over the Bengals. Although afterwards, Sam Weiss said he holds no grudges. They felt like uh, there was a score run up last year. Uh, there, there's no such animal in the National Football League. I remember in 1987, we had a 15 point lead with seven and a half minutes to go, and we sat on the ball and lost the game to Houston in Cincinnati. It's over with now. Maybe it was a godsend that, uh, hey, it happened now, and we can forget about it by the time week 15 rolls around. After the game at the, uh, the Astrodome, they played the song by Scandal, Goodbye to You, meaning to the <laughs> Bengals, but. Uh, you were down in Houston this week, Tommy. Were you, were you surprised that they had this in their back of the mind to win big? Not at all. I think they had it in the front of their mind, Chris. When you talk about a team wanting to blow somebody out, the first thing you want to look at when you look at that extra hustle, it comes in the special teams area, and on receptions by your offense are those offensive linemen getting downfield and making that extra block. I saw all of those things from the Houston Oilers today, in, in, including helmets being lost by the Bengals. <laughs> Tommy, you know I love the Oilers today, and I enjoyed this game so much, I was moved to some, something like poetry. There is little joy in Oilville, although the Oilers won. They exacted some revenge, but they didn't quite make 61. Chris? <laughs> December 23rd, circle it on your calendar, Oilers at Bengals. Stay tuned. Guy has been tuned in this year, Warren Moon. Now, I know it's early. When Dan Marino set all of those records back uh, in 1984, the records in throwing for 5,084 yards and 48 TDs, his first six games against Moon's first six games, Warren has thrown for more yards in that run and shoot offense. Touchdowns are close. Could be some more records. Moon set one today, doing it north of the border around here. We'll see if he eclipses some more. We'll be back. Buster Douglas, Evander Holyfield, for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Brought to you by the undisputed king of beers. Budweiser presents the moment of truth. October 25th at the Mirage, Las Vegas. cities in 10 countries across the Pacific. They're playing our song. United Airlines Royal Pacific Service. Rededicated to giving you the service you deserve halfway around the world. Come fly the friendly skies. A company can learn a lot in 125 years. Valvoline has. You learn in the lab, you learn on the road, you learn on the racetrack. As you learn, you make your product better. And better, and better. Today's Valvoline will keep your engine cleaner than ever before. And cleaner means more protection against engine wear. 125 years of quality. That's why people who know, use Valvoline. NFL Primetime is sponsored by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by United Airlines, serving over 200 cities in the U.S. and around the world. Come fly the friendly skies.
Keep you updated on the golf here on NFL Primetime. Uh, they are on the first playoff hole in Las Vegas. John Cook, I know you have him, Max, plus a half a stroke. He uh, missed uh, a birdie attempt, just hit the pin. He's lying on the green in three. Bob Tway is on the fringe of the green in two. We'll keep you updated. That's the first sudden death playoff hole in the very rich Las Vegas Invitational. All right, New Orleans Saints at home against the Cleveland Browns today. Question, how long would it take Steve Walsh to replace John Forkid, a quarterback for the Saints this year? Oh, about a game and a quarter. That's what happened today. Yes, John Forkid, four minutes into the second quarter, sitting on the bench, Steve Walsh is in. And on fourth and one, Walsh capping off a 79-yard drive. It's Dalton here the Saints in at 9-3. Third quarter, Walsh to Floyd Turner. Where's the defense? 45 yards, 16-6 Saints. Fourth quarter, Walsh to Eric Martin. Caught eight passes, seven from Walsh today, 23-6. Steve Walsh threw for 243 yards and three touchdowns. Been a long year for this man, Brian Wagner, for the fourth time this year. Block! Robert Massey gets his hand on this one. And it rumbled, bumbled. Oh, it's out of the end zone, but it's a safety. 25-6. Paul Lanham, special teams of the Browns will say, you know what, let's try it ourselves. Jock Jones blocks the punt. Stephen Bragg runs it out of the 17, setting up. It's a pretty long one-yard run, folks, but that's what it is. Kevin Mack makes it 25-20. to But Bud Carson's Browns. Had the ball deep in their own territory late in the game. A couple of hammer errors didn't work. And the Saints beat the Cleveland Browns by the count of 25 to 20. Dalton Hilliard scored 18 touchdowns last year. Finally got his first touchdown of the season for the Saints this year. Saints in the last three plus seasons, 13 and 0 against the AFC. Next there at Houston. That's next week. Chargers at the Jets in the Meadowlands. Problems all day for the Jets. Boy, they look great or they look terrible. Joe Prokop drops the snap, hits, bumble. The Chargers take over in Jets territory. After Jet goal line stand, Ken O'Brien gives it right back. Burt Grossman with the sack. Chargers lead it on a two-run homer, 2-0. Two the Jets would grab the 3-2 lead on a homer by Daryl Strawberry. But Joe Prokop in trouble again, holds onto the ball, taken down at the five. Very next play, Marion Butt, 26 carries, 121 yards, and a pair of touchdowns. The Chargers lead at 16-3. They go on to roll the New York Jets by the count of 39-3. So Chargers, once they play somebody in the AFC Central, they have a shot, it seems. Lions at the Chiefs. Barry Sanders had to get 100 yards this year, but he was the go-to guy today. Bob Galliano jumps it off to Sanders. Looking to blow by the Kansas City defense. Make Derek Thomas miss. On the way, look at him go. 53 yards. The Lions lead it 14-3. But the Chiefs would roll off 26 unanswered points. Christian Okoye in from the one-yard line. He had 91 yards, 29-14. But the man of whom you cannot say one discouraging word, Barry Word, from his own 47, exploding down the right sideline for a 53-yard touchdown. And the Chiefs lead it 36-17. In the fourth quarter, the debut of Heisman Trophy winner Andre Ware. Smart. He says, I got Barry Sanders on my team. I'll dump it off. Look at him. Get through the Kansas City defense down to the 36-yard line. Ware to Jason Phillips on the out pattern to the eight. Ware looks like he's run this offense before. Yes, he has. Ware to the veteran James Wilder. Wide open. Detroit's within 36-24, within a dozen points. But... Again, the final word was Barry Word. Rumbles for 30 yards, 18 carries, 200 yards. A Kansas City rushing record for one game. The Chiefs, yeah, they hung the Lions with 566 yards of total offense. The Chiefs beat the Detroit Lions by the count of 43-24. Except the Chiefs stumbled last week, and then they looked bad in the first quarter against Detroit. They came rolling back. And to keep you updated on the golf, Bob Tway, a winner. He wins it on the first sudden death playoff hole. He beats John Cook. I don't know. We'll have to figure out if your half stroke is good enough or not. Tway, the winner in sudden death in Las Vegas. When we return, some big games. The Giants and the Redskins for first place in the NFC East. The Falcons try to handle the 49ers. What other ideas? Barry Word played 19 games before today with the Saints and the Chiefs, had a total of 214 yards. But in one day, he was the Word.
to be kidding. Oh, no way. When it comes to all-time great sports moments, I'll take Hank Aaron's 715th home run. <laughs> well, my book is the Franco Harris's immaculate reception in the 72 AFC playoff. What's your pick? Is this Olympic hockey triumph one of America's greatest sports moments? Find out by calling now for your free 45-minute video from the Sporting News. The greatest moments in American sports history. That's right, the editors of the Sporting News have selected the greatest of all sports moments. And they're right here on this new exclusive 45-minute video that's yours free when you subscribe to the Sporting News at a big 52% savings off the cover price. Call 1-800-638-1200. Get your free video with 25 issues of the Sporting News for three payments of $9.96. Save 52%. Call 1-800-638-1200. That's 1-800-638-1200. Call now and you can have 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal and this valuable 120-page Guide to Understanding Money and Markets. That's 13 weeks of the journal for the news and ideas you need every business day. And this guide free, which tells you everything you want to know about money and markets. Now for only $34. Call toll-free 800-832-8700. Today's Wall Street Journal. Faster, tougher, smarter. Call 800-832-8700 now. Undefeated Charles Murray, hard-hitting Mickey Ward, a head-to-head -head battle for the United States Junior Welterweight Championship. Budweiser presents Top Rank Boxing, Thursday night, live on ESPN. Welcome back to primetime. Roger Craig was out of the lineup today for the San Francisco 49ers as they went into Hot Atlanta, a team they only beat by six points uh, earlier this season in a game at Candlestick Park. So, who would run the ball for the 49ers? Who needs to run when you have Joe Montana and Jerry Rice? The Falcons found it out the hard way. Roger on the sidelines, do they need him? Well, early on, first series, the Falcons rookie Steve Broussard fumbles. Bill Romanowski makes the hit, keep the long recovers. And a minute into the game, the Falcons pay for it. Joe Montana, Jerry Rice. How often have we seen it? You'll see it repeatedly. 24 yards at 7 nothing, 49ers. But not to be outdone, the next series, Chris Miller. To Andre Bad Moon Rison. 75 yards, nice dance, tied at seven. What's the matter with Joe Montana? I mean, he even gets intercepted. Wait, boy, he stinks, doesn't he, Tom? Charlie Dimery picks it off, but what's he doing here? It's not good to celebrate against Montana until the gun goes off. Yeah, Montana, Jerry Rice. He gets belted on the play, but Rice catches it 14 7. Against who? Charles Dimery. Cornerback Dimery stays in his back pedal too long, lets Rice get right on top of him. He's beat. Then you see the Atlanta secondary again. Dimery beat by Mike Sherrard. And besides the fact that they got beat, they did a poor job of tackling after the ball was caught. Doug Shively, defensive coordinator. Uh, this isn't good. Falcons special teams, this is good. George Thomas blocks the punt. Oh, let me tell you about Bobby Butler. Touchdown, we're tied at 14. But the 49ers have their own special team. Joe to Jerry, 19 yards, 28-14. Chris Miller says, that's all right. I'm going to keep trying, but... And he does, as he hits Andre Rice. Using Rice all day. Here, to Rice setting up a touchdown. It's going to be 31-21, Niners at the half of Jerry Glanville's birthday. Rice had caught nine pass to try and make it a happy one for his coach. Rice and Roger Craig said, you know what? You're just getting Joe interested. When Joe's interested, the rest of the league is in trouble. Montana, Jerry Rice, touchdown, 38-21. Joe on the day, six touchdown passes. The NFL record is seven, through for 476 yards, 11th best in NFL history. Fourth quarter, second and goal, Montana to guess who? Jerry Rice. Five touchdown receptions for Rice. 40, a birthday for Jerry Glanville. No, it was his 49th birthday. Yeah, and Jerry Rice helped ruin it. 13 for 225 and five touchdown receptions. Montana throwing for six. What can we say? They are simply unbelievable as the Niners win it by the count of 45 to 35. Fun game to watch, Ax, uh, if you like pinball machines. <laughs> well, it certainly was. And, you know, people still laugh about Jerry Glanville. They think his country music and his country expressions and his uh, Elvis routine are hokey. But the fact is, this guy took over a bunch of mediocre players, a bunch of defensive backs who aren't that good, 
And these guys, as weak as they may be at some positions, are playing very hard for him. That black magic works, Chris. It does. An update, by the way, on Chris Miller. He went to the hospital to leave the game in the fourth quarter, but we checked with the hospital. Sprained right knee. He left the hospital, has gone home, not on crutches, just uh, with a knee brace, didn't seem to be in any pain, and doctors say that they expect him to play next week. The doctors arrested around the league, hope that Montana and Rice don't play again because what they did today was unbelievable. The Niners thought they'd be pressed today by Atlanta, so they got a little bit interested, and the results showed on the scoreboard. Packers at the Buccaneers. Last year was the Packers, the team on the move in the NFC Central. This year, it's the Tampa Bay Bucks, and they met down in very hot and steamy Tampa Stadium, the big sombrero. 83 degrees, the Packers playing their third straight road game. The heat didn't hurt Steve Christie. Lightning striking again and again and again and again. Four for four for Christie. He's hit 11 in a row on the season. The Bucks lead 9-0 at this point. Vinny Testaverde. Look at Bruce Hill, the diving catch. Boy, Vinny is smooth, Tom. We're, we're learning that when he gets the time, he can make a lot of things happen. Here he hits Mark Carrier on the crossing pattern. As we take another look at the pattern, Mark finds the weakness in the zone, gets open, makes the nice catch for a 16-yard game. Later in that drive on second and five, Vinny Testaverde came into the game, the number one rated passer in the NFL. Deron Hall for 14 yards at 60 nothing Buccaneers. Vinny throwing for almost 300 yards today. But we've been calling for him for three years. Said that he could read the defenses better than anybody. Don Mikowski couldn't read much today, but the Packers get a break. Harry Hamilton is going to be hit by Herman Fontenot. It's a feminine. Nobody gets a handle. Oh, field judge Bob Wartman doesn't get the handle, but he continued. Packers get a touchdown. It's 19-7 now. That's the only thing that went Green Bay's way. Now, let me tell you about Wayne Haddix. 29 yards, a touchdown. He had two interceptions today. The Bucks, walking ears. That's right. Four and two. They beat the Green Bay Packers 26-14. Late game in Phoenix. Talk about a hot place. The Cards hosting the Dallas Cowboys. Big day for Roy Green. He passes Jackie Smith with his 482nd reception. The Cardinal all-time receiving leader. Still 27 yards shy of the mark of the yardage mark. Alonzo Highsmith fumbles. Lonnie Young recovers for the cards. Anthony Thompson, one-yard run. 7-0 Phoenix. Troy Aikman has had better days. Under pressure, lost it to Kelvin Martin. Jake Taylor rips it away from Martin. Makes the nice move here. It goes up to the 47-yard line. Rough day for Aikman as the Cardinals go on to beat the Dallas Cowboys 20-3. And uh, in that game, Johnny Johnson ran for 120 yards. First Cardinal in a couple of years to do that. So they got some youngsters in the backfield. Phoenix with 414 yards in total offense. And we return the Giants and the Redskins and more. But first, how good have the receivers been? Jerry Rice, Andre Rice. Well, this is their stats. Now, they've only played five games. They're both on a pace to eclipse the record of 106 catches made in one season by Art Monk and eclipse the yardage record of Charlie Hennigan in one season, 1,746. This shall be interesting. Like MacArthur, we shall return. I'm James Buster Douglas. I'm the heavyweight champion because I knocked out Mike Tyson. Oh, what a Some people think it was luck. Evander Holyfield thinks it was luck. He thinks he's the next champion. He's right about one thing. He's next. Douglas versus Holyfield for the heavyweight title. Live from the Mirage. It's the moment of truth. And the truth is gonna hurt. Call now for tickets. Red Devil Enamel. You can always count on its durable finish. Harder than ordinary paints, its beauty lasts and lasts. Red Devil Enamel, for the finish of a lifetime. Hi, I'm Jimmy Houston from ESPN's Jimmy Houston Outdoors. Every week we show you the beauty of our environment, but let's remember to preserve and protect the only earth that we've got. You can make a world of difference. A reminder, when primetime is over, we will uh, show you what happened and uh, how the Bob Tway john Cook playoff ended in Las Vegas. Late afternoon game at RFK between the Giants and the Redskins. The Redskins were singing Joe Cocker's hit tune from a year ago. I just want to be there beside you when the night comes. Beside you, that means first place tie in the NFC East. When the night came, were they there? Stan Humphreys, start 
in a tough spot against the Giants. The youngster under pressure. Cooley scrambles for 11 yards here. The Redskins ate up 10 minutes and 25 seconds on the clock. Ernest Beiner running for 12 yards. The drive only resulted in a Chip Low Miller field goal. It was 3 0. Second quarter, third and six. Humphreys has some time. Hit Arthur Monk for 31 yards. Bill Parcells looking for the Giants to make some plays like that. Phil Sims on third and ten from the shotgun. Stephen Baker, the touchdown maker. Let's get it go. He can go all the way. 80 yards. The Giants lead at 7-3 at the half. In the third quarter, second and ten at the 20. Sims to Mark Bavaro. Open behind Alvin Walton. Who says he's hurt? He rumbles for 62 yards. Sets up an O.J. Anderson five-yard touchdown. Giants lead 14-6. Trickery. Ernest Beiner to Ricky Sanders. Touchdown. The Giants lead us down to 14-13. Sims found a weakness, Tommy, in the skin's deep. He hits Maurice Carthorn here right in the a seam in the zone, and you can't let the fullback go 63 yards with a pass reception. Gerald Riggs hands a goal line stand. One yard out. It's a 21-20 Giant lead. Late in the fourth, Landett is punted. It's Johnny Thomas. Renee Thompson recovers, sets up a field goal, makes it 24-20. The interception by Greg Jackson pulls it out from Sanders. And the Giants hold on to win it 24-20. An excellent game. The Giants' best start. They're at 5-0. Their best start since 1941. Seahawks at the Raiders. Mo Jackson going to play next week. Howie Long in a few weeks. They're on the sidelines. Raiders grabbed an early 14-0 lead. Jay Schrader to the rebound. Ethan Hort, 21-0. Raiders. Schrader, 14 of 17 at this point. After Seattle touch of 21-7, Ron Brown in the ensuing kickoff. Stripped by the youngster Chris Warren. Jeff Chadwick recovers. The Seahawks cash in. Dave Craig, ever since that first game against the Bears, he's been on it. Long throw, 31 yards to Tommy King. 21-14, Raiders at the half. In the third quarter, the score 21-14, still the Seahawks driving second and goal. Greg Townsend strips the ball out of Craig's hand. Bill Pickell falls on it. Craig has, Tommy, you pointed out on the show before, the small hands. Sometimes he has the problem fumbling the football that time. It hurt him big time. The Raiders have swept the Seahawks for the first time since 1981. They played in Oakland then. They win it 24-17. Steelers at the Denver Nuggets with Bobby Humphrey out. Somebody to pick up the slack. How about Alexander English? No, he's no longer there. Well, did John Elway getting a first down on his own here on third and long. Broncos offense clicking early play action. Steve Sully's in there. Broncos lead at 17-7. Why do we call them the Nuggets? No score is too much. No lead is safe. Joe Wolf simplifying the offense, sending in the plays with the signals. Bobby likes it. Brister to beat Eric Green. The first round pick from Liberty. And at 17-14, Broncos at the half. Merrill Hodge find a sea of blockers, and the Steelers grab a 21-17 lead. Bubby, play action from his own end zone. Are you kidding? Dwight and the family stone is everyday people with the catch. He might go all the way, but he steps out on the three. Steelers didn't score here. But no matter, they score here. Brister, Eric Green, look at one, two, three tackles. This guy is like two first-round picks. He's that size, 27-17. Then Brister, Green. Are you kidding? Five touchdowns in two weeks. The Steelers in October, a juggernaut as they...